in this video we will discuss about uh, 802.1 key testing as we have discussed for our question so uh, it's like procedure will be same what we have to do we have to understand one document we have to understand one uh, particular functionality for VLAN and then we will try to test it so that is how I have told in the app testing as well the first step is to understand the concept then we have to come up with the manual steps for testing something so one concept we have come will make it as test case and then we'll come up with the manual steps what we are planning to do how we are planning to do it and then the result so here we are just taking three things because uh, what we have discussed depending on that we can just uh, will just test these three basic things like uh, same VLAN broadcast so uh, actually this kind of description is not good actually so what kind of description we should give uh, like it should be uh, some more descriptive or more explanatory so we can say like when a broadcast is sent in a multiple VLAN environment we have to verify or verify in a multiple VLAN environment when a broadcast is sent from a VLAN device it will be received to the other devices who are in the same VLAN this kind of thing will be more explanatory so uh, we are uh, giving in a more descriptive way so what actually we want to check is if one device which is into a which is into one VLAN if it is sending a app or it is sending a multicast uh, uh, which is sending a broadcast it will, be, it will be received to all the devices which are in the same VLAN and it will not be received to a different VLAN device so for this we will use the setup so uh, before that we will just see so we will see here uh, this diagram is bit messy I will do one thing I will explain the PPT itself so here you can see uh, PC0 and PC2 see in the switch environment suppose we don't have any VLAN so one switch will represent a network or multiple switch also if they are connected together they will represent single network only so switch is a uh, single uh, switch will make by default it will make a single uh, broadcast domain so we'll, if we are connecting multiple devices by using switches multiple end devices by using switches they will be in the same link then by default so if we are not considering VLAN here all PC0, PC1, PC2, PC3 will be in the same VLAN but in this case what we have done we have configured VLAN VLAN concept we have discussed in detail in our theory section for VLAN so what we are doing now PC0 and PC2 we have assigned to VLAN 10 PC1 and PC3 we have assigned to VLAN 20 now if we are sending a broadcast from PC0 like we have sent in the previous video for R when an R goes it was received to all the devices which is connected to the switch but in this case it will go to the switch but it will not go to this PC PC1 why because it is into VLAN 10 it will go here and it will go to PC2 but it will not be received by PC3 and PC1 why because physically by seeing what we can see is they are looking into different networking domain different uh, in the same uh, broadcast domain or in the same network but actually speaking they are not into 
uh, logically they are not in two same network because VLAN is created. So we'll see it again. What is expected? R where you will send it to get received to PC2 or any broadcast which you are sending it will be received to PC2 but it will not be received to PC1 it will not go here and it will not go to PC3 why because logically they are in two different methods that's what will use VLAN to logically divide to logically divide the network now we will see that so you will see here we will wait for the switch to come up so what is expected is if you are trying to pin com if you, if you are sending a broadcast like ARC so ARC will go and it will be received to the same network device broadcast will be received by the same network who are in the same network or who are in the same broadcast unit so logically physically or the way switch does is by default switch will not divide the network it will have same network but here logically PC0 and PC2 are into only one VLAN PC1 and PC3 are into different VLAN so you can see here you can see the switch you can see at partial ethernet 1 slash 1 into vlan 10 2 slash 1 into vlan 20 similarly here 1 slash 1 into vlan 10 2 slash 1 into vlan 20 so what now if you want to ping so steps involved is first you will configure this VLANs into the switches okay then you will form this middle port as trunk port trunk port I'll explain you again what is this trunk port and I have explained that in that tail section but I'll explain it again here now from PC0 we are trying to pin to PC1 okay it will not work let's give it a try so from 1.1.1.1 to 2.2.2.1 .2 .2 .2 .2 we'll try to play we will see what happens Thing we are trying, so this will obviously work now. We try to pin. So it will not work because logically they are not into the same network. So switch cannot help us to communicate between different network devices so logically they are into different network even though they are connected with switch so how we created this logical network into switch by using this VLAN concept this A02.12 concept now so A02.12 is a way of VLAN tagging now if you want to ping from 1.1.12 Yes, 1.1.1.2 it should work because logically they are into same network so now it is working and if you will see r hyphen a it is showing the entry of this 1.1.1.2 pc so this things we can check more thing what we can check is we can check for VLAN tagging field. so what we'll do we'll set up we'll set up this and now we'll try to ping it again so what we can do we can do we can see 
the capturing part. So see ICMP. So here you can see it is normal frame, plain frame with a net two. You can see here there is no VLAN related data. So you can make one case here like end devices will not tap any VLAN related entry. So again, I am saying this VLAN will be known to the switches. When you configure switch here, or when you configure, you will configure VLAN only to the switch interfaces. End devices will not be aware of this VLAN. Now, you will see here, next step, when switch receives it, now you can see, you will open it, you will see, whatever it has received, in receiving frame, VLAN was not present. But switch has added this Ethernet A02.12 frame uh, related to this VLAN field. So now VLAN fields has come into picture. Now next, this trunk port is carrying our VLAN related data. We have already discussed about this trunk port. So this also you can verify. That is whatever what it has received, it has received the data with VLAN. But before sending it to end device, it is removing this VLAN related information. So you can check that in outbound. VLAN related data is deleted, is removed. So this is how we can we can add the case like end devices will not receive data with the VLAN tag one thing second thing you can add you can add the case like when we have data into the switch it will get tagged switch will receive the data and it will tag it so that you can add a test case and you can verify with the field in the packet in the frame similarly if you are getting some new concept or you are uh, you are reading a new concept so respective test case also you can add it here so there's two things we have tested different VLAN communication we can't do it without using router or without using any layer 3 switch and second thing within the VLAN within the VLAN you can do the communication two more cases you can add is VLAN fields will not be seen into the end devices and in the switch this VLAN tagging will be added. <coughs> now we will check this uh, one more concept that is different VLAN communication. Now here we will wait for switch to come up. By default router you can see here as we told between two VLAN if you want to communicate we need a router. So now we have this router router interface it is showing down. So you can see here it is showing down this fast internet 0 slash 0. We will make it up. So now it is up. So we are waiting for this to come up. So uh, we can see one thing here is one more case we can add here is suppose there is a trunk port. So within this route, within two, within this router or within the switches if you will see in the previous topology also there is multiple logical interfaces created here so multiple logical interfaces so each logical interface is created to carry each vlan data so point one is created to 
carry VLAN 10 data, point 2 is created to carry VLAN 20 data, point 3 is created to carry VLAN 30 data. So VLAN tagging or a strung concept also a similar concept. So in trunk, all the VLAN which we want to traverse between the two switches, we can create trunk port for those VLANs. So trunk port is a VLAN is, is a port which will allow multiple VLAN data to uh, go through it. So here now if you want to communicate with a different VLAN, we will check what is the IP address here. 192.168.1.66 and if you will see it is into VLAN 20. So from VLAN 10 we are trying to think to VLAN 20. So 192.168.1.66 It will be slow now. Why? Because uh, our entry will be created. Now again it will try. So we are able, able to communicate within two wheel. Last example we have seen we were not able to communicate within two wheel. Why? Right? Because we were not having switch. We are, we are not having router. So here we have router, so we are able to communicate between two switches, between two different VLAN devices. So these are the things. So now when you are creating uh, this case, we have different VLAN communication. So for different VLAN communication, we need a different topology. So that also you have to mention in your test case what topology we need in what condition. Suppose condition you will create two topology in the starting of the test plan like through the test plan you will use this two topology one topology for these these cases this topology for these cases so in the starting of test case itself you can mention this topology i am going to use for this particular video and likewise you can add more test cases also like uh, we have seen this thing here so you can add the information like uh, for example this 802.1 QF encapsulation for the interface you need to verify whether it is created or not so this kind of test cases also you can uh, define there and uh, you can verify by using show IP interface bridge so here you can see multiple VLAN multiple IP addresses multiple logical interfaces are created over same interface so whenever you are doing any operation you should verify it. So 
so this is the configuration you need if you want to communicate between two VLANs. So <coughs> when you do this kind of configuration, you can communicate between two VLANs. So you need to create three logical interfaces. Those three logical interfaces will be into three different network and that will act as gateway for different different VLAN. What we discuss in R. For every VLAN, for every LAN or for every network you need a gateway. So this three will provide gateway, these three logical interfaces will provide gateway to all the three VLAN. So this also you can verify. Likewise you are doing any configuration, you can verify that. So this also you can verify in the router when you are saying like uh, I'm creating uh, I'm trying to uh, for like for this case is there uh, different VLAN communication we need a router so you have done one configuration and check whether this particular logical interface is created or not so for everything there should be a check condition there should be a verification condition so this is the basic testing for VLAN again if you are coming to a new concept obviously you will come across so many new concepts here for the VLAN so when you are getting a new concept try to write down a test case and try to write down a man write down manual step for that okay thank you we will discuss spanning tree protocol testing in the next step next step